Hey, good evening, Valley Middle. Tonight, uh, we're going to do our second lesson in 7.1, which is finding percentages over 100%. First, let's get to the uh, trivia question of the night, uh, an Olympic trivia question. Who is the most decorated Olympian of all time? Uh, you should know his name. All right, our target officially tonight is 7.1b. I can find the percentage of a number when the percentage is greater than 100%. Everybody together? Let's do this thing. All right. Little Danny D wrote an English paper for his teacher worth 30 points. His teacher gave him a score of 110%. I was actually upset because I should have gotten 120%. Anyway, how many points will be recorded in the teacher's grade book? In other words, what is 110% of 30? All right, what is 110% of 30? Well, we know it's going to be more than 30 points, right? Because 110%, I'm going to get some extra credit. Well, the decimal for 110%, if we move it two spots to the left to divide by 100, like we did before, it's 1.10. So if I pop that into the calculator, 1.10 times 30, I get 33. Does that make sense? You betcha. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, betcha. Uh, 33 points, three points more. Okay, makes sense to me. All right. Here is the uh, word of the day again, percentage. It's going to be the word for four lessons in a row. Percentage is the amount in each 100, or the rate per 100. Um, tonight, once again, moving the decimal helps us divide, to divide. So we move the decimal two places to the left to divide by 100. Of course, if we wanted to multiply, we'd go the opposite way. But tonight, working with percentages, Going from 110% to a decimal, we are going to take and move it two places to the left to divide. Just like that. So 110% becomes 1.1 or 1 1.10. 120%, move it two places, divide, becomes 1.20. 150%, dividing by 100, moving two places to the left, 1.50. 165%, you divide it by 100, move it two places to the left, we get 1.65. That would be the decimal. I know I'm beating that decimal conversion to death, but dividing by 100%, moving it two places to the left, four lessons we're going to spend doing this, and it's always the same when you want to change a percent to a decimal. All right, first of all, let's just see if we can't wrap our mind around the target. Yesterday, we were working with percentages that were less than 100 like this glass. It's not quite full. It's maybe 80% full. Today, we're going to work with ones that are more than 100 or greater than 100%, like this glass, which is overflowing. All right, let's work through a problem together. Here we go. We need to find 125% of 140. Well, here's my 125%. I'm going to divide by 100, move it two spaces to the left. Of course, I get 1.25% or 1.25 times 140. Well, we multiply 1.25 times 140, and we're going to get 175. You pop it in the calculator the exact same way we did last night. 1.25 times 140 equals 175. Number three, does it make sense? I continue to ask that question. Well, yeah. 100% would be one whole, and that would be 140. And 125% is a little more. Our answer, 175, is a little more than 140. So we're ready to move on. Our next problem. We need to work out the answer for the per finding 130% out of 21. Again, we know it's going to be greater than 21. Follow that same rule. Divide by 100. We are moving the decimal two places to the left to divide by 100. We end up with a decimal of 1.30. We're going to take that times 21. Pop it into the calculator. 1.30 times 21. It's going to come out to be 27.3. You can try it on your own if you've got your calculators. Does this make sense? Well, yeah. 100% is one whole. And one-third is like 33% about. So a whole would be 21. If we add 7 to it, which would be a third of 21, we'd have 28. So a quick estimate shows me that, yes, 27.3, that answer makes sense. 
All right, one last example before I have you do some on your own. Now we're talking about a number that is way over 100%. 255% of 200. 255% of 200. All right, same thing, write the number. 255%, divide by 100. You move that bad boy two spots to the left. One, two. You get the decimal of 2.55. You multiply that by 200. Pop it into the calculator one more time, just to make sure you remember how to do that. 2.55 times, whoa, hey, -o. 2.55 times 200. You get 510. Does the answer make sense? Yes. 200% is two holes, which would be 400. And 55 is close to a half, so it's kind of like two and one half times 200. Yeah, 510 makes sense. All right, here are some examples I'd like you to work through. Before we get to the Tecaturi show, go ahead and pause the video, grab your calculators, work these answers. Go. All right, I'm back. Let's see how you did. 105%, moving that decimal, you get 210. 145%, you'd have 1.45 times 180, you'd have 261. 250% of 155, well, that'd be 2.50 times 155 is 387 and a half, or 0 0.5. 300% of 200, you can almost do this one in your head because it's just going to be 3 times 200, which is 600. And 123% of 89, you'd have 1.23 times 89 for a total of 109.47. All right. Here we go, the Tikaturi show. What is 124% of 60? What is 275% of 124? Pretty straightforward target tonight. Let's get to the trivia question. Who is the most decorated Olympian of all time? Survey says Michael Phelps. And I'm pretty sure he's got a total of 22 medals, 18 gold, two silver and two bronze. If I'm wrong on that, uh, correct me and I'll give you a treat tomorrow. All right, thank you so much. Have a good evening.